welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Sandhi in Paninian Grammar. We are at a stage in this course where we have studied one of the very important part of Sandhis namely Ach Sandhi or the vowel Sandhi. And now we are going to study the next crucial very important Sandhi which is Hal Sandhi. Sandhi as a topic can be divided into only these two. The other two namely Visarga and Swadi, they are designed to focus on specific aspects and specific sounds. Prakriti Bhava is of course as stated earlier not a Sandhi but because it is related to the Sandhi it is also included generally in the traditional curriculum along with the other Sandhi sub chapters and therefore in the traditional curriculum <coughs> the term Pancha Sandhi Prakarana is used. Let us begin studying Hal Sandhi or consonant Sandhi. So what is a Hal Sandhi? Hal Sandhi is Sandhi taking place of a Hal or a consonant. The Sandhi that takes place of a Hal or consonant is invariably also a Hal. We have already seen that hal means a consonant. Now in case of ach sandhi, in some instances the substituent was an ach, a vowel and the substitute was a hal or a consonant like in yan sandhi. Similarly, there is no variety of dvisthanika ekadesha in hal sandhi which was there in ach sandhi. The basics of hal sandhi can be stated on this slide where input is x plus y both of them are consonants, y is the right hand environment and then the rule applies and the output generated is z plus y where z is the substitute of x and z is a consonant and this z replaces the one substituent namely x. Before proceeding to study the specifics of Hal Sandhi, it is important once again to take a look at the concept of Sandhi once again. What are the features of Sandhi? Sandhi is a Vikara or a Vikruti as against Prakriti, the term that is used in the Paninian grammatical tradition. Vikara or Vikruti in the form of modification as against two consonants that remain in their own form when come into close contact. So remaining in their own form is also known as Prakriti and modification is therefore a Vikruti or a vikara. 
what is hal sandhi input of so operations where sentential combinations are input like compound samas or pad or tadhit so examples given here are paddhati and satchit of the samasa or the compound similarly taddhit chinmaya and tanmatra these are also the taddhit pratyayas so hal sandhi is an input of such combinations also in the form of sentential combinations generally after the hal sandhi operations happen the sentence finally gets generated and is used in the process of communication the operational rules namely the vidhi sutras they apply when the conditions or environments of those rules come into being in the process of derivation of the sentence generally the conditions for each rule are believed to be exclusive but in some cases they are stated in such a way that they overlap this brings two or more rules into contact with each other this contact is primarily of the nature of conflict because both the sutras have an overlapping scope of application this is how in the hal sandhi rules get interrelated interrelation of rules is a very important feature also of hal sandhi the technical terminology that we shall be using while dealing with the hal sandhi is the following karyan or karyi which is an element which undergoes a particular operation nimitta is a condition or environment in which the operations happen and karya is the operation so karyi nimitta and karya this is a set of terms correspondingly we also have the other set of terms sthanin or sthani sthana and also adesha sthanin is an element which has scope of application sthanin is to be replaced sthana is the scope of application scope in the form of meaning as well as combination of verbal elements and adesha is substitution we also have sthanivad bhava playing a very crucial role just as in at sandhi so also in hal sandhi the questions that can be asked over here are can the consonant substitute be considered as its substituent consonant can two consonants substitute be considered as its substituent so we shall see that in hal sandhi something unique happens there is one substituent and there are two substitutes can both these substitutes be considered as the substituent that is the question and the answer is sometimes yes in a limited set of environments so sthanivad bhava does prevail as far as hal sandhi is concerned and then such an assumption can become an input for application of another rule this is possible in case of hal sandhi 
with several exceptions. We also have Uddeshya Vidheya Bhava playing a crucial role. Uddeshya Vidheya Bhava plays an important role as far as the structure of the rule is concerned. Uddeshya is something that is known with respect to which an operation is stated by a particular rule, namely the conditions or the environments which pre-exist. Vidheya on the other hand is an operation stated by the rule, something that is made known only by the rule statement. And given Uddeshya, the modification or the substitute takes place, this is what is Sandhi. The Sandhi in the Hal Sandhi section is governed by this Adhikara Samhitayam. The word Samhitayam that occurs in 82108, Tayor Yvavachi Samhitayam. So the question is what is Samhita? We saw that in Ach Sandhi, Samhitayam was also an Adhikara. So Samhitayam governed the entire Ach Sandhi section. Similarly, Hal Sandhi is also governed by Samhitayam Adhikara. So what is Samhita? Samhita is a technical term defined by Panini in his Ashtadhyayi as Paras Sannikarsha Samhita. 14109. This is a Saudhnya Sutra, which has got two words, Paraha and Sannikarshaha, both in 1 slash 1. Para is high, Sannikarsha is proximity, high proximity of sounds or verbal elements is termed Samhita. This is what is the definition of Samhita given by Panini high proximity of sounds or verbal elements. What is this high proximity? Now if we look at the meaning of Samhita given in the Vayakarana Siddhanta Kaumudi, it rephrases Paraha san, Sannikarshaha as Varananam Atishayitaha Sannidhi, the extreme proximity of sounds is termed Samhita. Now what is this extreme proximity? That is the next question. And we come to know this from the Kashika Vritti that Paro yas sannikarshaha varana nam ardhamatra kalav vyavadhanam sa samhita sa udnyo bhavati. So the extreme proximity which amounts to the gap of, of only half a matra between the sounds is termed Samhita. So extreme proximity is two sounds which are to be uttered one after another in such a way that there exists only a gap of half a matra time between them. This is what is extreme proximity. Only a gap of half a matra between two sounds. This is what is extreme proximity. This is explained in the text of the Kashika Vritti composed around 700 CE. Now, if we look at the later Paninian grammatical tradition and we have an important text called Brahat Shabdendu Shekhara. On this slide it is referred to in abbreviation BSS. Then there is further explanation of this Atishaitas Sannidhihi or Paras Sannikarshaha. What it means is Paragrahanetu Tat Samarthyat Ardhamatra Kalati Rikta Kala Vyavaya Abhava Rupa Sannikarshasya Grahana Na doshaha. So, what this means is 
No problem remains once we interpret the word atishayita in the following way. By force of the utterance of the word para, the proximity of the form of absence of the gap more than half a matra time is intended to be termed samhita. I repeat, by force of the utterance of the word para, the proximity of the form of absence of the gap more than half a matra time is intended to be termed samhita. And this proximity is sometimes with an earlier sound and mostly with the latter sound. What it means is, when two sounds are uttered, they are uttered with a minimum gap in between. It is this gap which helps clear and distinct comprehension of these two sounds. This gap is unavoidable. Not to have more gap than this natural one is what is described as high or extreme proximity. I repeat, not to have more gap than this, the one that is natural, is what is described as high or extreme proximity, which is what is described to result in Samhita. Let us look at the word Samhita in light of the explanation that we have studied so far. The word Samhita is derived by the verbal root Dha together with the preverb Sam by adding the suffix the and the feminine a. So sam dha and te. Te in the sense of karma can also be in the sense of bhava. Now the dha ter hi hi substitutes dha by hi. So we have sam hi te and then we add the feminine suffix a and we get the form Samhita, which means something being collectively put together or held together or the action of collectively holding or putting something together. This is the literal meaning of the word Samhita which matches with the explanation of the word Samhita given by Panini and explained in the later Paninian grammatical tradition. What is this something that is being held together? The sounds, the sounds which convey one meaning unit generally and sounds which are in high or extreme proximity, having not more than half a matra gap in between two sounds which is unavoidable and which is necessary for the distinct comprehension of two sounds. What about absence of Samhita? When sounds are being put together as combinations, there exists a state where there is no Samhita. One may take more gap in between sounds. So combinations which are not in high or extreme proximity might have the absence of Samhita. Such sounds, such combinations are uttered in proximity but not in a high degree of proximity. They are uttered with more gap than what is naturally required for distinct comprehension of sounds. This can be called as opposed to Samhita where Sam indicates being together, Apahita where Apa indicates distinct, far away, something being distinctly held or put together or Vyavahita, something with which is held 
together with some hindrances in terms of additional time gap in between. Now we come to the term Samhitayam, which is the Adhikara governing the Hal Sandhi. Samhitayam means in the domain of Samhita. When Samhita is intended to be done by the speaker, both Samhita as well as Apahita or Vyavahita are dependent on the desire of the speaker. When the speaker has the desire to speak in Samhita mode, the sounds are called in the Samhita mode and they undergo modifications. And such modifications are called Sandhi. When the speaker does not have an intention to utter the sounds in the Samhita mode, obviously the sounds do not undergo modifications and there are no Sandhis. This brings us to an important fact, namely the relation between Samhita and Sandhi. So Samhita is a precondition for Sandhi to take place. Samhita can be called a cause for Sandhi to take place. It is not a coincidence that both the words Samhita and Sandhi are derived from the same verbal root, Dhatu, that is Dha, and the same preverb or upasarga, namely Sam. Sandhi is explained by Paninian grammar in accordance with the desire of the speaker to not to do Samhita, no Sandhi takes place. Such cases are not explained by grammatical rules. Grammatical rules explain Sandhi which means the desire of the speaker is included. But where there is no Sandhi, where there is no Samhita, such cases are not explained by grammatical rules. They are explained by saying that such cases follow only Vivaksha and not the grammatical rules. In the derivation process of the sentence, which is what is the aim of Paninian grammar, first comes the collection of meanings involving their combinations as well. Next comes the collection of words with their combinations in correspondence with the meanings. And the third one is the processing of the words by application of various rules. And finally, the rules dealing with Sandhi apply. Thus, the stage of applying the Sandhi rules comes only at the end. And generally, after applying these rules, no further process happens. The output of the Sandhi process is generally not the input of any other process except the rules dealing with the swara, but this applies only to the ach sandhi section because swaras or accents they are stated with reference only to vowels. With respect to hal sandhi, even the swara does not have any role to play in general. So, after the application of the rules stating or describing the Hal Sandhi, no further process happens and then the sentence is ready for usage. It is complete as far as its generation is concerned. What are the types of Hal Sandhi? The Hal Sandhi can be said to have two types, ekasthanika ekadesha and peculiarly ekasthanika dvyadesha, ekasthanika ekadesha and ekasthanika dvyadesha. What is ekasthanika ekadesha? This is the 
most frequent type of hal sandhi where there is one substituent substituent which is replaced by one substitute eka sthanika eka desha this is also of two types purva nimittaka eka sthanika eka desha and para nimittaka eka sthanika eka desha purva nimittaka eka sthanika eka desha can be diagrammatically explained in this particular form where we have b followed by a and in the environment of b being immediately before a is replaced by c so there is ek sthani and ek adesha and the nimitta is purva b is the nimitta which is purva nimitta and ek sthani and ek adesha so b plus a is the input and b plus c is the output whereas the paranimitta ka eka sthanika eka adesha is like this a plus b is the input in the environment of b a is substituted by c so a plus b is the input and c plus b is the output this is paranimitta ka eka sthanika eka adesha b is the paranimitta एक स्थानिक द्व्यादेश दिस इज वेरी पिक्यूलियर वेर वी हैव वन सब्सिट्यूट ए विच इज रिप्लेस बाय टू ए एंड एक्स सो वी हैव ए प्लस बी एज द इनपुट इन द एनवायरमेंट ऑफ बी ए इज रिप्लेस बाय नॉट जस्ट ए बट ए एक्स देर आर टू सब्सटीट्यूट विच रिप्लेस द सब्सिट्यूट एंड देर फॉर दिस इज एक स्थानिक द्व्यादेश and we shall see examples of this this particular ekasthanika dyadesha has examples in the form of augments being added and the paninian grammatical tradition believes that augments can also be looked at as substitutes the instances of purva nimittaka ekasthanika ekadesha are shtutva sandhi and shtutva sandhi the instances of para nimittaka ekasthanika ekadesha are very many namely shtutva sandhi shtutva sandhi anuswara sandhi para savarna sandhi purva savarna sandhi anunasika sandhi छत्व संधि जिह्वामूलीय संधि उपधानीय संधि कुत्व संधि जस्त्व संधि शत्व संधि नत्व संधि एंड सम मिसेलिनियस अदर्स एक स्थानिक द्व्यादेश हैव दीज थ्री इंस्टेंसेस सत्व अनुस्वार संधि द्विर्वचन संधि एंड agama sandhi these are the three instances of ekasthanika dvyadesha to summarize we studied the nature of hal sandhi in this lecture we also got introduced to the technical terminology in this regard we noted the examples of two types of hal sandhi we observed that the hal sandhi takes place at the final stage of sentence derivation and its output is visible only to sentential combinations next we study various types of hal sandhi together with the examples thank you for your patience